Hi, everyone, and welcome to Food Farms and Chefs. And I have the honor to introduce you to Krista Barfield, who is the owner, the CEO, and um, <laughs> I mean, your list while I was do, uh, researching you just goes on and on and on. So I, I will touch base on some of the other stuff that you do, but you own Farmer John and, um, well, e uh, e Elkins Park is where you're originally like opened up, opened that up. But how did you, um, how did you get it started into farming? Yeah. Thanks for having me. I'm, I'm really glad to be here. Um, I started farming, uh, now this is 2023. So about Five years ago, I went on a vacation just after quitting my job. It all started on a vacay, right? Not planning on anything agriculture related. I never touched soil a day in my life. And from being burnt out from a career that I had just resigned from, I decided to take a, my very first vacation out of the country. And I chose Martinique as my first landing point. And on that trip, I encountered two hosts through Airbnb. And one was uh, a Thai chef that incorporated agriculture into just like their daily lifestyle, which by way of tea, like he would make me cups of tea every morning, picking herbs from his backyard. And I, and I think that's pretty common. And uh, what uncommon to me as an American from Philadelphia, you know, my backyard was concrete. So <laughs> it was very interesting to see that. And then on another part, the same trip, I had traveled to another part of the island and then I had encountered Black farmers. And that opened my eyes because I was like, wow, these are farmers that are doing this work. They own their own business. And it, this is not sharecropping. They're literally getting to provide food for people in their community as a business that is sustainable and profitable for themselves. And they want to farm. And I thought that was beautiful all in and of itself, especially because of the history of farming in America. So I decided to take both of those experiences and write business plans for them and come home and start a tea company and then start a farm as well. That is amazing. Cause, um, I, again, I researched you, um, prior to you joining us on, on food farms and chefs. And I know that you have a history in the, you know, the health field. Yes. It was more of an administrative role, but still like, I feel like that is going to kind of reflect on, decisions that you make moving forward in your life. Um, and the fact that you chose a field where tea, you know, teas and, and whatnot, and even, you know, eventually pro, you know, you moved forward and opened, you know, the CSA, um, mm -hmm. it, it affects your health in a very positive way and yeah. a very positive light. So, um, kudos to you for doing that and also Thank learning, you all of the different techniques to doing that. Uh, but, you know, you had mentioned you grew up in Philadelphia and as we all know, Philadelphia has a lot of areas that are, are um, nutritionally deficient because they are in um, food insecurity areas. So did that kind of also influence your decision to create the CSAs? Yeah, what I realized is that I, I never knew what a CSA was. So when I was in Martinique and I saw how the, the black those farmers were operating, they had a CSA. But when I was watching it happen, like I saw them packing boxes of fruits, vegetables, and herbs. And I saw people then coming to pick them up. I saw those people, those same people putting 20 euros in an envelope to pay for their share and they took their box away. So I didn't have the language of CSA yet, community supported agriculture, which is basically a membership to the farm. And um, when I saw that, I was like, oh, this is very, this is awesome. I had just quit my job. I don't have any next steps planned. Like this could be something that can work well. And I'm like, food is something, it's universal, right? Food is definitely a universal language. Everybody needs it. And most people are eating on a regular daily basis. Um, and, and most people would choose to eat on a regular daily basis if they could. So like, how can I impact change in areas where, you know, where there's not a lot of nutrient dense food and there's not a lot of organic food. And then looking at where I come from in a section of uh, Philadelphia called Germantown it is one of the, the lowest ranked health, uh, lowest ranked areas health wise. And so I'm like, I am a healthcare professional. Absolutely. I, I've always loved science. I've always um, had a, a grand respect for the clinical side of healthcare and being on the administrative side, we're really the ones that make it all go. We're, we're the ones that make it all get 
help it to be paid for. And I wanted to utilize those skill sets I had to really impact change on health disparities in my own region and now in America as I focus on nutrition security and where our food comes from. So yeah, that that trip literally did not, it, it blew my mind and I didn't even think about all of these things at one time. It's just like gradually as I started to come home and put the business together and started to execute mm-hmm. and I'm like, oh wow, like there's a person in Clifton Heights, which is about 40 minutes away from Germantown that's coming to me to pick up her share every single day. like. Well, and she found me on Facebook. It's like, what? Like, you're coming all the way here to come get produce for me? So I, th- that's what started to open up my mind. Like, I only was able to accept 10 families in the beginning. I'm growing on a small 3,000 square foot plot of land. And then I get all these people that are like, oh, well, when you have when you have more openings, like, I, I have a waiting list? Like, what is this? So, <laughs> yeah, I started to realize, like, the impact that we could really make. Yeah. So moving forward, I mean, you have exciting news because you did just expand. So you're going to make all of those people on that waiting list super happy and then some more. (laughs) Um, So like tell our listeners, like, what was it like moving from your 3000 square foot plot of land to um, I forget how many acres it's like. Yeah, (laughs) it's it's 123 acres that we have, uh, in one location, but we still are, we still have our land that's closer to the city and still expanding there because farming is meant to be convenient. So, and that's the only way that we get people eating the the food that's healthiest for them. The food that's grown closest to them is by making sure that they can easily access it in by way of convenience. So, uh, yeah, we went from having, uh, I like to start with the real genesis of it all. So 24 square feet greenhouse is what I had in my backyard in Germantown. <laughs> and then that increased to about 1500 square feet, about 10 minutes away from that home in Germantown. Then I expanded a little bit further in that same area to 3000 square feet. Then from that 3,000 square feet, we had 40,000 square feet of greenhouse space, about another 10 minutes from home in a different direction. (laughs) And then on top of that, we actually ended up moving away from that 40,000 square foot space for a multitude of reasons, but it wasn't the right fit for us. However, we then took a step back and then took a step forward to having five acres of land added to our enterprise in 2022 in the beginning. And now at the end of 2022, we uh, petitioned and was able to, to have a great proposal and be chosen to be the new stewards of 123 acres of land in Westchester, about 45 minutes from Philadelphia, our, our original location. So all in all, we currently are stewarding 129 acres of land and, and doing so in, in multiple different ways between our for-profit and our nonprofit. And I'm, I'm really proud of that. Yeah. I mean, that is something huge and something like enormous in the impact that it's going to have. Um, sure. But I also know that the the land that you took over, um, the person that h- used to be the AG for it, um, it retired. And so I'm wondering, did you step into that role to some, a certain degree? And I know that it's located um, at uh, West Town mm-hmm. School. That's right. Yeah. And, and that, um, you know, so obviously there's going to be students or, you know, what have you that are in, you know, kind of included in this, this land that you're, you're uh, farming. Do you participate in teaching those students? Yeah, so I'll just be make it very clear. This land is a lease. It's something that we, the person that was on this farm before was also a business owner, an entrepreneur in his own right, and had been a farmer there for over 20 years. Um, they retired. So in retiring, that land, which is, is owned by the school, is uh, now they were looking for a new leasee and Farmer John was, was chosen after a long proposal process. And so we are now the new people that will be paying the school for that to be able to use that land okay. um, and that space that's there. And so I don't work for the school, but okay. we are going to definitely be doing some um, things together. Yeah, I'm a full on entrepreneur. And <laughs> and so that space is, is another location that we're adding into the Farmer Joint Enterprise where we get to do the work, the impactful work that we do. So I'm I'm very excited to to have this space. I'm, I'm super excited about the juxtaposition 
of this location, where it's located, uh, the access accessibility to other areas in the region that could definitely impact from um, having more organic food and within the space. And um, and we get to transform that land into 100% organic, which I'm really, really excited about um, being able to put out chemical-free vegetables. And to me, that, that's the, the most important part of it all. And yeah, the students that are there at, at the school, I definitely look forward to, to having some programming for them to be able to, to come onto the farm and, and participate and uh, different growing activities, learn some things, as well as the universities in the area and other schools. Cheney University is directly across the street, and that is the first historically Black college university uh, in Pennsylvania. And, you know, it started in the 1800s. So I think that is something that I'm most excited about, truly, is to be able to, to, to be representation for other Black and brown students that will be directly across the street, knowing that they have a, a place to come to to get a nutritious meal. Um, yeah, and grown by a black woman and black farmer. And not only that, but while you're there, I know that because um, I've watched some video clips, you you take the time to also educate everyone. And, you know, I've seen I saw one video clip where a student was like, what is this? And you're like, it's a parsnip. And she was like, how do I eat this? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. so I like the fact that, you know, you're introducing um, fresh fresh vegetables and, and everything that are organic and that your farm is a sustainable, um, farm, but you're teaching students, you know, what vegetables and, and other produce are that they might not be familiar with. Yeah. And we do that through the CSA as well, which I love when people that, that sign up to be a member of our farm, we're going to throw in some items that their people are unfamiliar with along with the things that they are, you know, with the, the staples of most people's produce area in their fridge uh, or on their counter. But I do love to, to educate folks, uh, as you mentioned, on things that are brand new to them. And maybe, you know, we go back and forth between cultures when we're talking about food. Like one day we might be talking about, you know, a, a beet borscht, right? <laughs> or, and then another day we might be giving recipes for how to make a, a an amazing spiralized pasta out of a squash. Like we move around so much uh, and making sure that we cover the bases of, of cuisine uh, through the scope of, of, of agriculture. Mm -hmm. Which is amazing. Now, you know, I know that I have CSAs that are surrounded because I, where I live, I'm like plopped in the middle of, you know, farmland and woods. So <laughs> I, I have that surrounding me, but, um, you know, the people that go out of their way, like the woman who, you know, drives 40 minutes away to, to pick up her produce from you, um, how, how do they get more involved or how do you involve them more in the community sense and how yeah. do they purchase um, the CSA. Sorry, that's a lot. <laughs> yeah, no worries. Yeah, the, the CSAs are purchased through our website and we launched those um, at the, towards the end of last year. And uh, many of them are sold out, which I'm very happy to report because those dollars are super important to help with the preparation of season. Um, but we do have still have some openings and we, we've added on a bunch of other pickup locations as well to try to make it as more convenient to, to people. So we have five pickup locations now uh, throughout the region. And um, the the other part of your question was <laughs> the first part of it. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Um, you know what? I even forgot at this point, but oh. I, I, <laughs> um, I know that I asked about like how, how do they participate, but um, oh, oh yes. community involvement. Yes. Yeah. So we, so our CSA is, is set up so that we don't require our members to come and volunteer. They're mm -hmm. absolutely welcome to but we don't make it a requirement like if you want to share at this price you got to come volunteer uh, I don't like to do that because I know time time deficits exist at the end of the day we are Americans and we all know what that rat race is like and <laughs> we know what it is to, to go to get your job done and then be exhausted and so the last thing somebody may want to do is to come work on a farm <laughs> just so they can get their vegetable um, and, and it really is about it's supporting us and I want people to be able to support us their, if their heart is to support us, which is when people sign up for a CSA, that's a part of it. Yes, you're getting great, great health benefit from eating 
raw organic vegetables, but you're also supporting a local farm, which is supporting people and planet overall. And um, if people are doing that, I, I don't want to pressure people into thinking that you have to also do this other thing. Now, if you want to do the volunteer piece, we absolutely welcome anyone so to come. And then we also host events quite often throughout the year. Um, we love inviting people over to the farm and to, to see what we have going on and, and really just to, to pitch in, put their hands in soil. It's very therapeutic. You know, ever since 2020, we and as Americans have, and, and people around the world have just been more sensitive to the need for a mental health outlet. And so yeah. I also look at putting hands in soil as, as, as that. And uh, we welcome folks who have interest to come assist us in any way and, you know, take a load off by picking up a shovel. <laughs> the irony of that, but it works. Um, yeah, and breaking a sweat is really good. It is a stress reliever. It is. Um, now, something else that I saw is that you you offer customizable seating. So, you know, is that something new to you, to your program or is that something you've been running? Yeah, this is new and I'm really, really excited. I've had this idea for a couple of years, but custom growing is something that, uh, and that's what you're referring to, right? Our, yes, our custom, yes. Yeah, I, you know, folks can't always find certain crops that they're looking for, especially on a business level. So right now we're rolling this out at, at the business level, but at some point I, I'm open to absolutely taking suggestions of people who have, you know, might have uh, ancestry and culture of, of, of not being able to find a food that they grew up with. Yeah. And, you know, or something that isn't a recipe from their grandmother, you know, generations back. I want to be able to to get that vegetable to them or that piece <laughs> of something if I can grow it here. And so, but for specifically for our custom grow form that we have um, right now, it's available to chefs and food artisans and different makers who are uh, creating food or products that they would like to have an organic source of. Yeah. And it's very hard to find organic many things. <laughs> um, and so if we can grow organic and bought for, for a organization or a person who has great interest in making sure that they're supporting organic and they want organic for their products yeah, um, because of whatever it may be for the health of it or for the profit margin, whatever, you know, it's difficult to find that outlet. So we're going to be custom growing for some makers in this area and, uh, and they're going to be, you know, putting out some great uh, products and then some plates that are all full of organic farm uh, produce. So I'm really excited to, to help people's dream come true. And then they're in turn helping me make my dream come true by increasing the amount of organic agriculture that's in the area. Yeah, because it's very important to to like get the word out and to like let people know that that's available. And, you know, especially because in food deserts, in food insecure areas, you know, you want to enrich the environment because bringing those nutrients into their diets on a daily need is helpful for not just not just um their health and well-being, sorry, not just right. for their health and well-being, but also because it help you know, it helps invigorate their bodies and their mental state. Yeah, for sure. And just overall happiness and um for for people in planet. I just it's just better. So yeah. I'm excited to be able to be a, a person that now has access to this amount of land that can allocate some of that for the growth of products specific to certain consumers. Um, so one last, uh, question before I let you go, because, uh, I saw that you have some recipes that are up on your website. What's mm -hmm. one of your favorite recipes that you've made with, um, one of your, uh, some of your produce, I should say. I'll definitely say we just did, I was at the Pennsylvania farm show earlier in, um, in January and I did my first ever chef demo. Um, on TV. So it's actually something that you can look up and it's being circulated on PCN television. Um, and, you know, I, I am not a chef by any means. And I do want farmers to get the recognition they deserve about for what we do. Uh, Cause you know, chefs get all the love, no shade to chefs, but like farmers, definitely we help y'all do your job in the way that y'all do it <laughs> <laughs> by provision. So um, my very favorite thing that I have eaten that I've made is definitely going to be a red cabbage recipe. It's smoked red cabbage and it's really well done, braised in the oven, 
um, kept on the whole head, kind of like sliced and just kept in, yeah, smoked red cabbage is where it's at. <laughs> All right. Now, unfortunately, we have less than 30 seconds to go. So where can people find you online? Farmer John Philly, and that's John, J-A-W-N. It's a Philly word. So find us there, get involved, come to the farm. Uh, and also you can look up our tea company as well. And uh, we'll send you some tea from herbs that we grow at our farm. Oh, nice. All right. Thank you so much, Christi uh, Krista, for joining us on Food Farms and Chefs. And we will be right back after this short break. <laughs> 